Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Um, I wanted to look at the um, sort of top stories in astrology for uh, 2023, the major um, shifts that are happening. And um, I did this with um, um, Marianne from Revealing Light. We talked about this. We looked at the solar return for the U.S. Um, but this will just, um, and then we did cards. This is going to be a little bit more astrologically heavy. So uh, we'll look at the charts, uh, what I think the important points are in the year. Um, so there's a couple of changes happening that are significant this year. Um, we have... Uh, two planets, three planets, changing signs. Um, and from Jupiter, we have Jupiter change signs. We have Saturn change signs. Um, Uranus remains in, um, in Taurus. Neptune remains in Pisces. And Pluto moves out of uh, uh, Capricorn. Um, into Aquarius for a short period of time from um, um, March 23rd when it moves into um, Aquarius, which is an interesting time because it's right around the equinox. Um, and the equinox, um, that is when the sun moves, in this case, that's when the sun moves into Aries. Um, is a power always a powerful time because it's on the cardinal cross and the cardinal cross is about initiation um so it's a powerful time in itself without pluto moving into aquarius but pluto moves it into aquarius and then moves out again back into capricorn um on the 11th of june uh 2023 that period of time which is what, like two months, two, a little over two months? I can't do math in my head, so you can figure it out. <laughs> that period of time is a time when we need to really pay attention uh, because it's going to give us a clue as to many of the issues um, that we face while Pluto moves through Aquarius. It's sort of like a preview reel in a movie. Um, but unlike movies, they don't give you the whole story. <laughs> they just tease you uh, uh, with the story. Um, and Pluto is going to be in Aquarius for 20 years. So it's there for a long time. Um, and Pluto moves slowly. So it's not going to be, you know, it's not, it, it's, Pluto works underground. So a lot of things initially when Pluto moves into Aquarius, maybe will things will be happening under the surface. That's the way Pluto generally works. Um, however, there is a point in um, May where we have a, a T-square with Mars opposing Pluto. Mars is in Leo, just moved into Leo. Now Mars has been, up to that point, had been uh, started the year retrograde. Um, then went forward, got out of its shadow and out of the sign of Gemini, which it doesn't really like being in, whether it's forward or backwards, uh, and then moved into Cancer. It doesn't like being in Cancer, really, uh, although Mars and Cancer makes great house cleaners. They're, like, amazing. Um, <laughs> but uh, at least in my experience, I don't have a Mars and Cancer, so I can say uh, it's not me. Um, but um, so it's not that comfortable. Yeah, so th this is like first time Mars like moves into a sign where it feels like it can be its its mighty self, right? Mars in, in Leo. The interesting thing about that Mars in Leo is that that is um, the Mars of uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. He has Mars at like the first degree of Leo uh, retrograde. And so there's that that feels like a turning point. And then we have Mars opposing uh, Pluto, right? Um, 
and squaring Jupiter, which just moved into Taurus. So there's this uh, uh, fixed, when we have these fixed uh, energies, and it, it's it's an active time, but it's about really breaking old emotional um, states. It's 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 um, it, it's a soul. It's a soul. Uh, it's a test of the soul. It's a test of the soul. So that so we have that happening. Um, so that period of time uh, between. Um, the end of March and uh, the second or the first, you know, 10 days or 11 days of uh, June is, is going to be very, very, excuse me, but, but very pivotal and, and can very much um, create a, um, like a blueprint for, for um, the period of time that uh, Pluto moves through um Aquarius so that's significant now 2023 numerologically is a seven year and a seven year is a year of knowing yourself know thyself it's a year of analysis it's a year of stillness it's a, a year of introspection seven needs to be true to self but Seven doesn't always know who self is. And so this year we get to learn who we are on the inside. Now, for those of us who have spent um, their whole life on the inside, so to speak, uh, in that respect, um, you know, the, the gold or the, or the fruit of that labor, of a lifelong labor of introspection, brings up wisdom that people who perhaps don't, aren't that introspective will need to perspectives that maybe they hadn't thought of. Oh, that's an interesting perspective. That's an interesting perspective. And then those who are more outwardly oriented perhaps need to help the introverts um, come sort of out of that introverted place so that they can find their voice and they can and they can speak their truth and, and be confident in that. So um, I think there's a balance there. Of course, that sounds to me like the balance between the the, the uh, feminine um, and the masculine energies. Now this year we start with Mars, the planet of the masculine retrograde, um, but stationing like in a really really powerful place. And Mars is powerful uh, when well Mars is always powerful but when it's when it changes direction there's a lot of power in that time and so uh, but it is in Gemini so how it's going to manifest maybe a message is going to come through or uh, further uh, a further sense of a split uh, in some in some cases because uh, Gemini rules duality you know um but Venus, which started last year retrograde, is starting the year conjunct Pluto. And so the idea of the feminine power, like starting the new year right, um, is very much um, um, an archetype that we should be able to mm -hmm. see this year as, as we move forward in this year. More women taking positions of uh, or power or taking stands or, um, you know, they delivered for the, for the Democrats. Now the Democrats have to deliver for them. So, and we have to start paying attention, right, to what the people want, what the people say. Um, so, and that's also part of the Pluto moving into Aquarius, the, the power moving away from the sort of top-down hierarchical, I am the mighty and powerful Oz, I'm the one that you must listen to, I know everything, you know, the God, that God the Father, you know, knows everything kind of omnipotent, like, quite frankly, ridiculousness uh, of the patriarchy. 
you can't just have one side of things and expect to get a, a, a perspective on it. It's just not, it's not possible. So we need to utilize our, our mental capacities. Absolutely. We also need to utilize our intuitive capacities, our psychic capacities, our heart, our, our feelings, our feelings, our gut feelings, our our gut feelings, our feelings of love. You know, a lot of people are stay in their gut. They're in their gut feelings and they haven't brought that energy up to their heart because there's a mistrust that they can survive um, without being aggressive, like the animal nature perhaps. But there's a place for that. There's a time for in our lives where we all may come to understand what that feels like. We don't necessarily stay there. Um, so Jupiter moving into Taurus is another energy. We, we start the year with Jupiter in Aries. It's expansion, experience, initiation, new ideas. When Jupiter moves into Taurus, uh, we see if any of those new ideas have legs, if there's, they're sustainable. There's going to be a uh, a question of uh, may perhaps of sustainability um, at that time. Um, so there's that that's happening. Of course, I talked about Pluto moving into Aquarius. Um, Saturn moves into Pisces. Saturn uh, moves into Pisces on the 6th of March and is there for about three years, a little less. It goes uh, towards the end of its run through Pisces. It does uh, go into Aries for for, for a, a little while, maybe a month, two months, three months. Comes back into uh, Pisces, finishes up. And then in 2026, it goes into Aries. So it's, it's in Pisces um, for a little over two and a half years, I think. And Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, so it's the end of the road to a certain extent. Um, it's the end of a cycle. And Saturn is the planet of structure. It's it's the tester. It tests karma. It's the karmic. It's like the uh, the king of karma. <laughs> As you sow, so shall you reap. Who's the tax collector? Saturn, right? Who's the debt collector? Saturn, right? Um, who gives you who 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 gives you the the abundance of of hard work from a place of uh, of um, good heartedness or even a place of uh, persistence, right? Um, Saturn. <clears throat> so we get rewards. We get admonished with Saturn, and it's moving through the last sign of the zodiac. It tests our beliefs. It tests our dreams, our ideals, right? You have an idealistic view of life and you can be up there proselytizing about it and saying, this is the way. And then that gets tested in you. And so if it passes the test, you can proclaim when, uh, when, um, when Saturn goes into Aries, this is, this is the this is the truth of the matter, or this is what I'm want to plant, right? Aries is about the beginning. So we have a time with with uh, Saturn in Pisces where we're both testing uh, our beliefs, our ideals, and the like to see which ones uh, have any per potential for 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 thing for uh, working out direction, intention, perhaps. Um, and then we also have this Pisces being this amorphous sort of field of potentiality that eventually the seeds of Aries sprout from. So it's almost like molding, um, uh, utilizing your imagination, Pisces, to create your reality. Um, Saturn. So that's where Saturn is going to be now moving through. And so those are the issues that we face. 
as we move through 2023, in the case of Saturn and Pisces, 2024, 2025, and then 2026 when it moves out of Pisces. And incidentally, conjoins uh, Pisces ruler um, Neptune in Aries, the first degree of Aries. So that's a really important point of time, in time, for a new start of some sort. Um, so we're still sort of working this out with this Saturn and Pisces, and, and that'll go on for a couple of years. Uh, okay, so uh, what else? Oh, yes, the nodes of the moon. The nodes of the moon are um, points in space. Mm -hmm. They kind of act like vortex energies. The North Node is considered the unknown future, the direction of that we evolve towards, whereas the South Node is where we've been and what we, in some cases, need to let go of, but it's also things we know how to do. So within the South Node, there's a lot of uh, uh, talents and capacities. You just, you just, in order to evolve, you can't stay there. You have to be willing to a certain extent to move out of your comfort zone. And for those that have, for those of us who don't choose to, to move out of our comfort zone, there are a few, very few of us who want to do that. Um, fate steps in and <laughs> moves us along. Move along, little doggies. Um, but there's a shift because right now the North Node, as we begin the year, is in Taurus. It's been there since the beginning of last year. And when it moved into Taurus, Venus became its ruler. Well, last year, when the nodes moved in, the north node moved into Taurus, Venus was retrograde in Capricorn. Um, and so we're going to have, um, on the 17th of July, we're going to have the nodes shift and the north node is going to go into Aries. So now the ruler of the north node is going to be Mars. So Mars becomes significant in the direction forward. Uh, I believe at the time that that happens, Mars mm, is in Leo. I believe it's in Leo. Uh, but we can look at the charts. I'll, I'll pull the, uh, I guess I should probably pull the charts up. Hold on a second. We're just talking about it. And oh, damn. I hate when this happens. Sorry, guys. This is ridiculous. I don't know why this happens. All right, let me see if I can fix this. Hold on one minute. So I think the best thing to do now is to look at some of the charts I'm talking about. We'll be we'll do this quickly because I pretty much said what I wanted to say about them, but I think it's always a good thing to look at the charts. So the first thing I want to look at um, is actually um, the stationing of Mars. Okay, so this is not that. Hold on one minute. Uh, actually, let me do it this way. Okay, so this is uh, the day Mars stations direct. It is January 12, 2023. If January 12th so sounds familiar to people who, you know, have been studying astrology, uh, January 12th was the day in 2020 when Saturn and Pluto came together in Capricorn. Um, it hadn't been, they hadn't been um, bedfellows, so to speak, um, since the last time in 1982. So uh, often associated with pandemics. Um, and then of course we had Pluto and um, Jupiter, um, three exact conjunctions of those of that in the same year, 2020, uh, all sort of correlated with these spikes in COVID. So, um, and because of that, the sun is sort of in that place where, uh, where that was brought up. So there could be some resurgence um, of something about that time. And, um, but we do have Mars. This is a, a chart for uh, Washington, D.C. So we see Mars stationing in the 12th house, a house of hidden enemies. <laughs> um, it is making a uh, 
an inconjunct to the south node. The south node is ruled by Mars, uh, co-ruled by Mars and Pluto. Pluto at 28 is uh, just coming off its last conjunction with the United States Pluto. Um, and we have Venus here taking uh, squaring the nodes in this chart. Um, so there is a um, a need to look at uh, the values of the feminine or the values of the community. Um, in that eighth house, the um, the value of people, the value of people power. <laughs> there in that eighth house, uh, squaring those nodes, um, trining um, uh, Mars, trining actually that Venus. Um, now I know that this is um, a chart for the U.S., but there are intimations here to me of Iran. So I don't know if maybe we'll help the women of Iran or 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 what's going to happen, but. There seems to be some sort of um, um, thing coming up for me, at least with with that. Um, but this is where there's a lot of power. That uh, when when a, 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 a sign like especially Mars uh, changes direction like this, it uh, it doesn't move very quickly, but it's very very powerful. So there's a lot of there's a lot of potential for constructive or destructive energy, depending on how well, um, you know, whatever you're, wh whoever we're talking about or whatever the situation we're talking about has been able to um, learn from the Mars retrograde period instead of simply get uh, frustrated from it. Um, so this is, I think this is important. Um, and also because Mars happens to sit on the Uranus of the United States in the Sibley chart. So um, the Uranus uh, in Gemini um, deals with nuclear, um, nu um, the two bombs that were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, one each were uranium, um, uranium bombs. And we were the only, we've been the only country so far that's dropped uh, that on population. So um, there is uh, also, I feel like a trauma associated with, well, of course there's trauma associated with that, but like a karmic trauma to maybe the Japanese. And so we see the Japanese sort of rising up now and saying, we wanna be able to defend ourselves. And a willingness, I think, on the United States to to let them really, and uh, and maybe even help them um, as they reorient the power st structures in the uh, east. In the east. Um, so there's so there's all of that. I'm I'm vibing out from this chart, right? Okay, so that's the one, that's one thing we want to look at. Um, we don't want to look at Kevin McCarthy, do we? No, we don't want to look at that either. No, 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 no. Saturn's ingress into Pisces, right? So um, let's just simply, I'm going to simplify this chart for you guys because there's a lot of stuff on this one. And I think we can um, just make it easier on, on you guys. <laughs> Maybe on me as well. Oh, gosh, gosh, golly, gee, well, all right, where are we? Saturn and gross into Pisces. Here we go. Uh, here's Saturn up here, zero, zero Pisces. It happens on the 7th of March, 2023. That is a seven and seven is a 14 and three is a 17, eight. So this is a star vibration as um, tarot wise of the star card, which is associated with the sign of Aquarius. And uh, let's see, is anything in Aquarius in this chart? No, actually, nothing is in Aquarius. Um, well, nothing that we can say. There may be something there that I don't have up, but with the regular stuff, the regular, the regular planets. Um, so Saturn moving into into Neptune sign, right? Uh, we look to we look to Neptune in the chart. What's Neptune doing? Neptune's at twenty five Pisces. 
You can also look at Jupiter because Jupiter is also a, a, a ruler or a classical ruler of Pisces and certainly worth a look. And we see that Jupiter is conjunct Chiron and conjunct um, Venus, all in this 12th house. Again, I feel this, uh, I feel a, a, a resonance with I, Iran. Again, all sort of undercover here, perhaps helping the wounding of the feminine in some way. Not helping the wounded, but helping the feminine rise, perhaps, in that country. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll just continually to destabilize them because they're our enemy instead of supporting democracy, really supporting it, not just dictating to them what they're supposed to do, which is what we normally do with countries. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? One of the things I do want to point out is that Pluto is at this point. Uh, in the last, in its last sort of degree of of uh, Capricorn, it will um, in uh, two weeks about move into Aquarius. We'll look at that too, uh, but it's already square the nodes. It's already square the nodes, and it's going to um, it's going to get closer and closer to exact squaring the nodes, and that is going to be right around the time I believe that um, the nodes shift, and we'll look at that as well. Okay, so uh, what else do I want to say about Saturn? So we see um, this 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 in here in in the twelfth house, um, indicating a possible healing of the feminine, um, or things behind the scene being being uh, done um, in order to support the uh, the healing of the feminine and and to a certain extent the masculine there because it is it is Aries. Um, Neptune is square Mars. Now, this is around. Mars is going to exactly square Neptune uh, later in March, but this is um, around the degree that. Um, it's getting close to the degree that it, that it went retrograde. So it's sort of a, 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 a more energetically potent degree. Making that square to Neptune is going to make the last square to Neptune. It's made three squares to Neptune. And Mars and Neptune uh, have a, a difficult relationship because Neptune is so diffuse. And Mars is also kind of diffuse in its in its Gemini sense and that it can go in two directions. But there can be a lot of dilute, illusion and delusion with this stuff. So, uh, and we certainly have been, been seeing that, but this will be the last time that it uh, squares um, in this in this synodic cycle anyway, so. Um, so there's, there's still, and, and it all goes with the Pisces, right? Neptune, Pisces, you know, where are we going? What are we doing? What do we need to evaluate? Um, what do we need to let go of? What do we, where do we need to put our, our, our magical powers of imagination to, to work so we can create, uh, the world that we want to live in, right? So there's a lot of power in that, uh, a lot of confusion as well, but with you know, with when you're dealing with Pisces, you don't always see it. You feel it, you imagine it. But I'll tell you, as somebody who has a a, a pretty heavy duty dose of Pisces, we tend to we tend to be able to manifest what we imagine will manifest. It doesn't always happen in the same way, and sometimes we get distracted. Um, but for the most part, I think we get what we we think we're going to get, or what we imagine we can get. And so that's why it's important to keep your your mindset and your and your and your focus on things that are, are productive and 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 help you to to move forward in your life in the best way that you can given the circumstances that you're in because that will change your circumstances change as your consciousness changes your circumstances are simply the the container that Holds your consciousness to a certain extent. You've created that container, and we just discreate and recreate something else, which is one of the magical powers, I think, of of um, 
uh, of Saturn Pisces, then I, th I think, you know, uh, then you're a magician, right? Then you're a magician. All right. Um, okay, what else do I want to look at? Um, let's take a look at Pluto moving into Aquarius. That's a biggie, right? All right, let me find that here. Um, actually, you know what? I should be able to find it over here. I know I spend a lot of time talking to myself. I should probably just not do that. Maybe. Jupiter ingress into Taurus, Mars and Leo. What is this? No, no, no. This? Nope. Oh, okay, here we go. How could it be? Okay, Pluto and Aquarius. This is the first time it goes into Aquarius since it goes back and forth over the next couple of years till it fully goes into Aquarius, I believe. 2025, 2024, 2024, I think. Here is Pluto. And take notice of where the nodes are. Okay. Um, Pluto is square the moon. Moon in Taurus. Pluto in Aquarius. The moon is at its most sober, I think, in Taurus, or certainly stable in Taurus. Not sober, <laughs> certainly stable. Um, we have Venus here as well. It's wide, but it's there. It's within 10 degrees. I, give, I tend to give Pluto a big orb because it's an evolutionary planet. It's a, it's a process planet. Um and I I want to also uh, let's see what else I want to say about this. It is uh, Pluto in Aquarius is in conjunct Mars, which is just about ready to go into Cancer, and it'll finally be out of out of out of um, Gemini where it's been since I think eight August. August, I think, 2022. All right, so um, this is a big deal. And I said, and I said stuff about it at the beginning, so we don't need to spend too much time on this chart. We'll have other opportunities to look at this chart, believe me. Um, the other shift that's happening is the shift of the nodes. I wanna take a look at that. I will simplify this chart for you. And of course, the nodes as the as the year starts, the nodes of the moon are in. Um, hold on one minute here. Um, I'm sorry. Let me just do this. I I can't. All oh, right. I was going to simplify. Sorry, guys. Why is this not letting me do that? Oh, it is. Okay, cool. I didn't think it was, but it did. All right. No, it's no, it's no, it's no, it's no, no. So, a couple of things I want to point out. Here's the nodes move retrograde. So, when it moves into a sign, it moves in in the last degree of the sign and moves out in the first degree of the sign. So, it's backwards to everything else. Here we have 29, uh, 59. Now, you know, when it was in, when the north node was in Taurus, the ruler of that north node was was Venus. So now it moves into Aries and the ruler is now Mars. So there's sort of a, a switch, right? Because when the north node was in Taurus and the south node was in Scorpio, Scorpio is a Mars ruled, co-ruled sign, uh, Pluto and, uh, and Mars. And now Mars is in charge of the direction forward. Whereas Venus, the ruler of, of, um, of um, Libra, or the, the planet associated with Libra, yeah, the ruler of Libra, um, is now in charge of the south node. And Venus actually has a retrograde cycle in Leo in the summer. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of reevaluation of love relationships and love and creativity and things like that and such and like. Uh, and then we're going to have Mars and Aries. I mean, we're going to have the north node in Aries, which is initiatory. It's about you know, going to places where you, 
that scare you to a certain extent, having to do something new, something different. All right. Okay, let's see what we want to say about this. Okay, yes. And then, so now we have Saturn as it moves in to Aries and, and, uh, Libra, we have Pluto in the last degree. It is going retrograde, however, uh, along with the nodes. So it's going to move along with the nodes, retrograde. Uh, but it is square the nodes. On the other side, we happen to have a new moon in Cancer. Look at that. This degree of Cancer is the degree of the Mercury of the United States, by the way. Uh, and and um, Jupiter in... Um, in Joe Biden's chart. But we see this giant square, right? We have a thick, we have a, a cardinal uh, grand cross. There's a lot of tension in those. We do have connections to Venus in, uh, in Leo, makes a nice sextile. And uh, let's see what else, a nice trine. So we have Venus there in Leo, that's important. Um, and let's see if there's anything else. We have Pisces. I mean, Pisces. We have uh, Neptune here, sextiling. So we have Venus and Neptune, which are in conjunct each other, uh, sort of bringing, uh, giving us sort of a door out of this, this box that we can find ourselves in. Uh, but it's going to take a little bit of adjustments that are necessary. And it's going to have, we're going to have to really, I think, practice a lot of forgiveness. I think that that's part of um, the picture of the nodal uh, as it moves through the nodes. The as the no, blah, 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 as the nodes move through um, Aries and and Libra, that's going to be a theme. I think that's like eighteen plus months, right? Eighteen plus six or eight something. I don't know. Uh, almost nineteen months that the the nodes will be in that pair of signs, and then they go to the next, which is the North Node in Pisces. And that's actually the start of a new cycle because the North Nodes go retrograde. Um, and so the last degree of Pisces is sort of the beginning of the Nodes journey in a strange sort of way, which is not here or there. We can talk about it at the time. Um, so we do have this new moon pressured by Pluto in opposition, squaring the Nodes. So this is a very fraught time. It's 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 going to be a, a really interesting year. And again, we're going to, this is a seven year. It's about listening to that inner voice. It's about being introspective. It's about understanding who you are. And when you understand who you are, you can it'll help you understand what you have to do, what's what's important to do, what what do you need, what actions do you need to take? North node in Aries, ruled by Mars, the planet of action. Interestingly enough, Mars is in Virgo, five degrees of Virgo, 429 of Virgo. And this is, the, I have a Mars in Virgo. My husband has a Mars in Virgo. These are people who, who uh, help, help, care, heal. Uh, so this is about healing. And it's actually um, uh, It's actually opposite Saturn. See that? Saturn sort of holding uh, the need for forgiveness onto Mars, saying you have to work towards this, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, in a, on a, you know, hopefully. This, this is the positive spin on this. Right? I also want to point out that that Pluto and Neptune are making a yod to Venus. Again, Venus is being pointed out here, this 28th degree of uh, 29 degrees of uh, of Leo. So if you have something there, um, this is an important time for you. This is an important time for you. That's where I have my North Node in my chart. But this is also one of the degrees that Venus is going to be going back over because it goes retrograde. Um, so there is a process that's going on where it's not just going to 
but it's going to be this sort of more waxing and waning manifestation um, through this time. It, it it's it just it's going to take work. I guess is what I want to say. All right, let's see what is what else do I want to look at here. Um, so right after the um, right after the nodes, right? Is it the nodes that move? No, right after Pluto. Sorry, right after Pluto moves into. Um, into Aquarius, uh, Mars then moves into Leo. And uh, this this really should be zero, zero Leo. But uh, so we have the opposition and we can see that we still have the square, of course, and then add to that square, Jupiter, which moved, just moved into Taurus. So this is a fixed grand cross. So we have a, we have a cardinal grand cross. We have a fixed grand cross, right? Um, and these these grand crosses are are crossroads where we have to make a choice. And so my feeling is make the choice for life, make the choice for a better future instead of just things getting worse and worse and worse, because things are really, you know, there's a lot of things are kind of spinning out of control. But in that respect, there's a lot of energy build up with that. And so you you can utilize that energy that's available to you to focus on the things that that you want to create. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of energy and power for actual change, but it has to come from a place of understanding of the self seven, the seven year, right? Okay. All right. Let's see. Is there anything else that I want to look at here? Jupiter ingresses into Taurus. So this is when Jupiter, Jupiter on the 16th ingresses into Taurus. Where is it? Where's Jupiter? Here we go. There's Jupiter right there. And it's conjunct the North Node. That's nice. You know, we've had Uranus conjunct the North Node for a long time. It's nice to have Jupiter there. And we have Mercury there as well, squared squared by uh, Pluto. And we can see Mars, again, moving closer and closer to its uh, ingress into Leo. I'm real interested to see um, Zelensky's Mars return this year. Um, yeah, that's definitely something I'm going to have to look into. Okay because he has Mars at uh, zero degrees of, of Leo retrograde. And Mars station direct. Okay, so we went through all that. So that's all the stuff I wanted to show you. I know this sort of went on and on, but um, hopefully you got something out of the beginning. If, you, if, if you're still here and you're still looking at the charts, thank you very much. Um, I'm just trying to stop my share here. Oh, there I am. <laughs> So that's kind of a little, just a little bit of what's, what's, you know, just a general overview of 2023. It's not, um, I usually do a, a whole like PowerPoint. I just, you know, with my mother, my mother's passing and all the stuff I have to deal with now with that, I haven't had the time to, to really do a PowerPoint, but I think this is good. So um, I hope this informs you and, and helps you to understand what's ahead. Uh, and uh, I'll be, I'll stay here. I'm here all the time. Um, so if you want to see what's going to go on in any particular month, I usually do a, a monthly in the beginning of the month. I haven't done January yet. I will get to that uh, most likely January 1st, just tomorrow. Um, but until then, uh, have yourself a wonderful, uh, have a wonderful evening. Be safe out there, New Year's Eve. Um, this is the last day of the sixth year, right? The sixth year. And the sixth is about responsibility, what you're responsible for, what you're not responsible for. And now it's about understanding self. So uh, it's going to be an interesting year. And uh, God willing, God is willing, I will be here with you to uh, navigate through it. So thank you again for all your support through my uh, the challenge of losing my mom. Uh, for the support now that little Charlotte is has not yet come home. Uh, that's a cat, by the way, in case you don't know <laughs> what you get nervous, it's a child. Um, but wherever she is, hopefully she's safe and warm and somebody's taking care of her. Or she comes back to us and we get to take care of her. You just hope that, um, you know, they come into your life and sometimes they leave your life and that's uh, the way it needs to be. But um, she was loved when she was here and she's still loved. And so she can come back anytime soon, Charlotte. Um, 
and thank you for the support through the year. Um, hopefully I've helped you. <laughs> That's my intention. To share what I know, ease the burden, ease the, ease the, ease the challenges and uh, with a little bit of humor and um, a little bit of perspective and uh, a whole lot of love. Thanks to everyone. And uh, I will see you again uh, for the January astrology, which as I said, will probably come out within the next day or so. All right, guys. Namaste. Much love.